Please join me in our opening prayer. We gather at the table for the first time in a new year. We bring ourselves as new, refreshed and remade by Advent and Christmas. Our spirits seek the presence of God and the company of friends. Come, let us worship together. Amen. Welcome to the Born, Katamit, and West Falmouth Parish. The first reading today is the Hebrew Bible, Psalm 72. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the royal son. May he judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. Let the mountains bear prosperity for the people and the hills in righteousness. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people, give deliverance to the needy, and crush the oppressor. May he live while the sun endures and as long as the moon throughout all generations. May he be like rain that falls on the mown grass, like showers that water the earth. In his days, may righteousness flourish and peace abound until the moon is no more. May he have dominion from sea to sea and from river to the ends of the earth. May his foes bow down before him and his enemies lick the dust. May the kings of Tarsh and of the isles render him tribute. May the kings of Sheba and Sheba bring gifts. May all kings fall down before him, all nations serve him. For he delivers the needy when they call, the poor and those who have no helper. He has pity on the weak and the needy and saves the lives of the needy. From oppression and violence, he redeems their life and presses their blood in his sight. Long may he live, may gold of Sheba be given to him, May prayer be made for him continually and blessings invoked for him all day. May there be abundance of grain in the land. May it wave on top of the mountains. May its fruit be like Lebanon. And many people blossom forth in the cities like the grass of the field.
Let's say the prayer of dedication together. We offer ourselves to you, O Lord, and these gifts of our hands. May we be useful, may we be gracious, all the days we dwell on earth, bearing witness to your glory. Amen. Second reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2. In the, in the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to be shepherd, my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child of Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of Lord. Frankincense, gold, and mirth. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another word. May God's wonder be revealed to us through the mystery of these words. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God, the creator of all that is. Today we observe Epiphany, the day that designates the arrival of those strange visitors bearing gifts. Matthew's gospel is the only one that mentions them, and he doesn't tell us how many there were. The tradition in the Western Christian church now refers to them as a threesome. Our hymns and nativity scenes reinforce that as a fact, but we don't actually know much about these wanderers from the East. They probably came from Persia, Arabia, Yemen, Babylonia, or Ethiopia. They likely weren't royalty at all, but astronomers, astrologers, alchemists, or magicians. Tradition now refers to them as wise men or the Magi. Whoever they were, they were seeking Jesus. They asked of Herod, the Roman appointed king, who was himself Jewish, where to find the child that they had heard proclaimed. They figured he would know. Herod apparently had heard about this child and was getting nervous. Anyone predicted to be the Messiah King was someone likely to put him out of a job, and he did not look favorably at that prospect. Herod said he didn't know where the baby had been born, but he pretended to be interested in finding him to worship too. He asked them to stop on their return home and tell, them, tell him all about this baby and where he might be found. Herod did not have worshiping on his mind. He was thinking of murder. So onward these gentlemen went, however you want to picture them, as wise men or royalty, magicians, astrologers, or alchemists. They were men who had stopped whatever they had been doing and traveled to parts unknown, navigating by the stars to find the Holy Child. What lives did they put on hold for such an expedition? Did they have families, wives or children, livestock, businesses? 
Who was taking over for them, whatever their daily responsibilities were? They weren't getting into a car and driving a couple hours and then going home for dinner. They didn't have reservations at Motel 6. They likely traveled with pack animals, camels or donkeys, and walked a good portion of the way. Where did they get food? Were they able to wash at all? How long were they gone? It must have appeared to be a bit of a harebrained scheme to those left behind. The scripture tells us that they did finally find the baby and that they offered him gifts and knelt in reverence. They came to adore him and they found him by reading the signs in the sky. They found him by following the stars. I can't get the image of the stars out of my head. How long did they travel over dark and dusty roads through the night? These magi were warned in a dream not to return home to tell Herod about the child. It was their intention to protect Jesus by not sharing information about where he was. But Herod was not to be deterred. So determined was he that no child had the opportunity to dethrone him, that he ordered the massacre of all male babies under two years of age. If he didn't know which one was the threat, he would simply kill them all. Tyrants and dictators drunk with power will do anything at all to keep control. What opposing forces at work, the wise men, astrologers or astronomers or whoever they were, seeking Jesus to worship him and Herod hoping to find him to kill him. Where do we belong in this epiphany story? Epiphany means revelation or sudden appearance of or understanding of something. It is the appearance of the divine. And 2000 years later, we are the Magi. We're the ones following our own versions of the stars, navigating by tradition and scripture and reason and experience more than by the night sky. Today, we are the ones seeking the child. We travel a great distance, but figuratively rather than literally, to enter into Advent and to experience the holy mystery. What stars do we use for navigation? What are our reference points, our signposts? What guides us on our way? Are we troubled by not feeling worthy of approaching this child? And are we so absorbed by our own inadequacies that we forget the message of this season? Do we worry that our gifts aren't right? Do we hesitate to come to God because we feel we have nothing to offer? We can only come to God as we are. Whatever we are becoming is our gift to God. It can be difficult to find words to describe our faith. Questions and doubts and life in the world can cast some pretty big shadows. Fear tries to convince us otherwise, but we know better. Pastor Steve Garnas Holmes wrote a powerful poem about Herod and his encounter with these wise magi who sought the baby Jesus. He writes, Herod is afraid. This is the root of his strutting, his meanness, his cruelty to children, the poor and wayfarers, his disdain of anyone who doesn't adore him. He is afraid. This is the well of his bluster, the spring of his violence and hatred. In his fear, he will insult his critics, threaten his neighbors and assault the weak. In desperate fear, he will strain for every illusion of his grandeur, his excellence, his power. He is most afraid of light, so he will sow darkness and veil the truth. He is most afraid of love, so he will grow a calloused heart and tremble at true gentleness. He is most afraid of grace, 
so he will send his army to slaughter. But he has already lost. This is why he is afraid. He is no match for love and light and grace. His evil has already failed. His victims are already resurrected. We are not afraid. We can come to God's table today unafraid. Love is not measurable. Love cannot be counted or contained. We cannot earn God's love, and neither can we do anything to lose it. Franciscan priest and writer Richard Rohr reminds us, it's a paradox that God's gifts are totally free and unearned, and yet God does not give them except to people who really want them, choose them, and say yes to them. This is the fully symbiotic nature of grace. Divine loving is so pure that it never manipulates, shames, or forces itself on anyone. Love waits to be invited and desired, and only then rushes in. We too are magi on our journey of seeking through our whole lives. It will not go the way we think it will. We will meet obstacles. We will get lost. We will have to go home by another way. It does not matter. We come bearing gifts, our whole imperfect selves offered in love, the response to love's invitation to enter in. May it be so. Amen. In deep silence, in the presence of God and surrounded by friends, we quiet our hearts and still our minds to offer our prayers. O oh God of us all, prepare our hearts to listen and to be moved. Make us dare to open the desires of our hearts and may we all pray for the things we hold close. We pray for the concerns of our church family and community. Bless this new year that we may walk in peace and justice, building a better world for all who live among us. Make us merciful, kind, and generous. May your spirit dwell in us richly and flow in blessing through our words and deeds. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. 
We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to the disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Cup of Let us pray. 
Holy God, creator of all that is, bring us into communion with you today and all days, that we may be love in the world. Amen. So go forth in peace, protected by God's extravagant love. Remember always that you are a child of God and that the Holy Spirit dwells in you. When you find yourself surrounded by darkness, be the light. Honor and glorify God in every moment of your living. Amen. <laughs>